All right, guys, so this question is one of my personal favorites, obviously, because it deals with behavioral health as well as biostats. So um, you better get these right. All right, guys, it says, which of the following may be the most appropriate step to improve patients' symptoms? Is it A, continue Haldol and add Prozac? Is it B, switch to Prozac? Is it C, switch to Risperdone? Is it D, switch to Chlorpromazine? Is it E, in intense psychotherapy? So the question reads, a 24-year-old male is brought to their primary care for establishment of care with his parents. Uh, so the 24-year-old comes with his parents. He was, diagnosed, uh, he was diagnosed with schizophrenia when he was 21 years of age and started on medication. Family reports his hallucinations improved with medication. The report now, he is now more withdrawn and appears more depressed. Family report that his initial medication was haloperidol. Which of the following may be the most appropriate step to improve the patient's symptoms? So we have this guy, he's 24, and at the age of 21, he must have had his first psychotic, uh, like a psychotic break, um, and he was diagnosed with schizophrenia. So he was started on medication, haloperidol, and now, even though the hallucinations, um, which are part of the schizophrenia diagnosis, have improved, He's more withdrawn and uh, now more depressed. So what would be the most appropriate step to improve the patient's symptoms? Now, what do we know, what do we know about haloperidol? Okay, haldol, right? Haloperidol. It is first generation. First generation antipsychotic. And, and mainly it's, it's, it's not a matter of if you get side effects. It's a matter of, say, when. Right, and we worry about the extra pyramidal symptoms with that. But even though he's not really experiencing those, um, it's just more of a what, what you got to know from a, from an exam perspective. So, and that's Haldol, and of course you were to NMS, the worst thing. But again, we're not talking about that. We're talking about a guy who has schizophrenia. It's well controlled, but then he's now you know more withdrawn and appears depressed. So what do you do? Now, first of all, you got to know with schizophrenia, and this is really the take-home point, because it's easy to go through here and say, oh, wait a second, continue Haldol and maybe add an antidepressant. Yes, you, you could. Um, is it switched to Prozac? Well, if he's got schizophrenia, is Prozac alone as a solo agent going to help him? Probably not. Um, is it switched to Risperidone? Well, what do we know about Risperidone? This is an antipsychotic, but it's second generation, uh, a little bit safer side effect profile. Uh, is it switched to chlorpromazine? Well, as we know, chlorpromazine is another first generation. Is it intense psychotherapy? Not necessarily. You know, you'd have to, that'd be a real stretch. Not even close on this on this point. So I can eliminate A and E because they're just not, uh, I'm sorry, uh, A and B because they're just not good, B and E because they're just not good choices. But the take home point for this guy is with schizophrenia, you got to know what positive symptoms are, and negative symptoms. Very important. And it's really, it's really easy when you think about it like this. A positive symptom is something that, say, the person, you, you don't already have it, right? You know, naturally, I, I don't have delusions. You know, I don't have hallucinations normally, right? So a positive symptom means you're giving the person the symptoms. They don't already have it. Now, because the reason I say that is because a negative symptoms, you know, it takes, it takes something away. So if I have motivation, it takes it away. You know, when it comes to um, enjoying enjoyment in life, it takes it away. Uh, the, you know, decreased, you know, speech, you know, it's like a lack. It looks, you know, it's like de depression symptoms, right? But the key is a positive symptom is something you don't have naturally, but it's given that you now have. That's why it's a positive symptoms, delusions, hallucinations, disorganized speech, disorganized thinking, all right? None of that's baseline. It's, it's a new symptom given to you. Now, to treat positive symptoms of schizophrenia historically, sure, let's use the first generation stuff, right? If someone's having delusions, hallucinations, you know, it makes a lot of sense if that's their primary issue to go with the first generation. You know, this is your Haldol, Haloperidol, uh, your Thorazine, uh, Flufenazine, um, 
and the Thorazine is actually chlor chlorpromazine, uh, so I should, I, should be, I should do a better job on that, but the chlorpromazine is Thorazine. Fluvenazine, heliperidol, okay? Those are all your first generation. They do very well treating the positive symptoms of schizophrenia, the things we're adding to somebody, delusions, hallucinations, disorganized speech, disorganized thinking. Um, it's stuff you normally don't have. Now, the negative symptoms, meaning normally people have motivation, enjoyment of life, and appropriate speech stuff, you're taking that away, that's a negative symptom. How do we, t should we classically treat the, schiz the negative symptoms of schizophrenia with second generation? This would be your risperidone. This would be your olanzapine. This would be your clozapine, your quetiapine, and your aripiprazole. You know, Risperidol, Zyprexa, Clausril, Seroquel, and Abilify. And so what do you really got to know for these guys? You got to know side effects typically. That's where they like to question, like to test you on. Risperidol puts you at risk for increased uh, prolactin levels, okay? Uh, you know, you get the, the man boobs kind of thing. And uh, what, what's the cutoff? Anybody remember the cutoff to tell between a prolactinoma versus a medication-induced elevated prolactin, it's 200. And I forget the units, but just remember 200. If the, if, if the prolactin levels are greater than 200, you better be thinking prolactinoma. If it's less than that, you better be looking for some antipsychotic. I'd be looking for risperdal. It's somewhere in there. Olanzapine, you got to be thinking weight gain. And of course, with all these, you're going to do a lipid profile, right, as a baseline. Uh, clozapine, what do you got to worry about? Clozapine side effects. You better order a CBC, okay? You better order CBC because you worry about agranulocytosis. It also puts you at risk for seizure, increased risk of seizure. Okay, but the agranulocytosis, and you better order a CBC for that. Okay, uh, to, to make sure you're, you get you, that you have appropriate levels of your uh, neutrophils. Uh, quetiapine, kind of neutral for the most part, and then, uh, but again, you better know it because it, it's a second generation that can treat the negative symptoms. And then a aripiprazole, the side effect you worry about akathisia, that restlessness of the legs, you know, kind of jittery and stuff like that. So back to this question. Which of the following may be the most appropriate step to improve patient's symptoms? Well, we got to treat something for the schizophrenia. He's more withdrawn. He's having these negative symptoms. So it would be the most appropriate step is to switch from a first generation to a second generation medication. So he would switch to Risperdal, okay? And that would treat the negative symptoms. But it's real easy. Again, guys, schizophrenia, positive symptoms, negative symptoms. Positive symptoms, are you're adding something. Negative symptoms, you're taking something away. You treat the positive symptoms with first generation. You treat the negative symptoms classically with the second generation. If you do that, you're gonna be okay. You'll get all the questions right, okay? Question number two says, how many false positives are there? Okay, well, man, it looks like a biostasis right in our wheelhouse. A new test to diagnose flu is being evaluated. The sensitivity of the test is 80%, and the specificity of the test is 90%. In the study, there are 100 people who truly have flu and 200 who truly do not. How many false positives? You better get all these biostats questions right on step, okay? You always draw a box when you get a numeric kind of question like this. You label the top, reality. You label the side, the test. Positive, negative, positive, negative. If the, everything's based on the test. So if the test is positive and reality is positive, well, that's a true positive. If the test was positive, reality was negative, that's a false, it's based on the test, it's a false positive. Um, if the test was negative, reality negative, true negative. And if the test was negative, but it was reality had it, it's a false, based on the test, negative. Now, the question says, how many false positives are there? So I worry about this box. So do I care about, care about much of this left-hand side? For the sake of time, I do not, okay? So what, do, what, what, thing, what deals that we know about deals with the right-hand side? Specificity, right? Specificity is the bottom right going up. So specificity is true negative over, uh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's specificity is true negative over true negative plus false positive. So what do we know? We know the sensitivity of the test is 80%, all right? So the sensitivity, but that's, that's over here, so let's not waste time on that right now. The specificity is 90%. So specificity is 90, but we don't like percents, we like decimals. 
The, in the study, there are 100 people who truly have flu. So in reality, how many people have it? 100. In reality, how many people do not? 200. So good, that means this entire column is 200 people. So that means true negative plus false positive are 200. You see where I'm going with this? Focus on the side where they're going to ask you the question. If they're asking about false positives, I don't care about the left-hand side. I'm working the right-hand side. I know it's dealing with specificity. So from there, I can go to solve for this. I just move the 200 to the other side. 200 times 0.9 is going to give me um, 180, right? It's 90% of 200. But is that my answer? It was my answer 180? No, that's true negatives. True negatives 180. How many false positives? Well, 180 plus something gives me 200. 180 plus 20. Answer choice A. You can solve these very quickly. You just gotta get in the habit of, of, of filling out this box, focusing in on what they're asking. Now I could sit here and solve for any anything on this side. You know, I could say, oh wait, sensitivity, okay, sensitivity they told me was 80%, and I know sensitivity is this guy going down. That's true, ne true positive over true positive plus false negative, and there's a hundred people that do have it. So again, I could I could answer anything on that side, okay? It would say true positive is 80, false negative 20. You know, doesn't matter. But you gotta be comfortable with this. You can't give those points back to the test, guys. You gotta have all of these, okay? Hope it was helpful.